Let's go on the beat, presented by ChevyDriveChicago.com, and we welcome in former Northwestern Wildcat and Chicago Bear, Corey Wooten, now of CHGO Sports, master of media. Corey, we talked earlier in the week, and now you kind of had a chance to sort of digest everything, and you know, Fitz is no longer the head coach of the Northwestern Wildcats. Uh, just thinking back to it, what was your reaction to the firing of your former coach and then sitting here right now as, it's, as you've digested it all week long? Yeah, it was, it was definitely surprising. Um, I, I think all of us, um, you know, thought Pat Fitzgerald would be there till the end of his career. He'd probably be a lifer at Northwestern. And unfortunately, uh, the situation and, and everything that transpired and played out the way he did um, – ended up uh getting getting fired um you know i kind of i kind of saw that coming just the way everything unfolded with how they handled everything and i feel like it it got to a point where the university was handcuffed and they had to make a decision on it do you think fitz and this is just speculating i'm assuming you haven't Mm -hmm. talked to him but do you think he's sitting there today regretting not getting out in front of this way back when when the allegations first happened and maybe being open to an investigation and would take whatever punishment and you know seeing where he's sitting at today do you think he has any regrets about how this went down i i would imagine that i don't want to speak for him but um usually if you get out ahead of things usually the end result is a little bit better um it just looks bad uh from when you look at the media and everything him not commenting on anything so i think that's why people feel the way they do and obviously there's been evidence to, to support the claims but when you look back at your time at northwestern Woot you would almost say that you might not have made it to the NFL without Fitz's influence. Is that giving him too much credit or does that feel right? No, it it definitely feels right. I feel like he helped me uh, on and off the field, um, you know, as a person, as a player. Um, I told you that story on CHGO, how the one season I had one sack, he ripped me a new one in the off season. And I wrote that on a, uh, on a note, and hung that over my bed and I looked at that every day and I feel like that motivated me in the next season had double digit sacks and was potentially projected as a first round pick. So, you know, Wildcat fans are trying to look forward right now and who's going to be the next head coach down the line. They've obviously got to get their house in order. A lot of the conversations turning to the stadium and will that be built? Do you think that you should build a pause on building an $800 million facility uh, before Northwestern gets everything settled and moves forward with the football program, however that's going to be? Or do you just say, hey, you know, we know that we're going to be a first-class university. Let's continue forward with what the original plans were. I think you got to continue with the original plans. And and the whole thing is is rebuilding the program, right? Obviously getting the right pieces to the puzzle, coaching staff, getting new recruits in there. Eventually, eventually they are going to get everything correct and right in, in whatever uh, way they, they feel, shape, or form. So I can see them pausing it as well because it is a big investment. But I think, um, you know, the future of Northwestern football, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they they put the right coaching staff in there and uh, they're, they're able to recruit well and everything. But it's it's going to take some time with, with this looming uh, just over the program. I think it's – it's it's really a tough sell at this point for for upcoming recruits with everything that's been going on. So I think it's going to take a couple of years um, for for Northwestern to really rebuild. What originally drew you to the program? Would I mean you're an East Coast guy? You could have gone and played, I'm sure, a ton of places. There was something about Northwestern. You weren't recruited by Fitz. You were recruited by Randy Walker. It was the guys in the locker room that that I told everybody. I said when I went there and. You know, I hung out with the guys there. They were down to earth. Everybody seemed to get along with each other. It was a really great locker room. And, um, you know, I told you this, Carm. I said, my experience when I was there, I can't talk about after I left or, or the direction of the program where it was now. But when I was there, we had a really good locker room. And I feel like ge- people generally really enjoy being around each other. Everyone hang out with everybody. Um, so it's definitely disheartening to hear. I mean, I've been a Northwestern fan since I was about 10 years old, and people are asking me, and, I, and I'm using the word, I, I, I'm still stunned at what happened. I couldn't have predicted this in, in any way, shape, or form. Does that word you know, still apply for you? Maybe, but maybe you're looking back, it's like, you know what, there, there were some signs that maybe I was just blind to. No, I mean, I'm definitely stunned, um, but, but it's hard to see, hard to comment on what happened after I left, right? Because, like I told you, as an NFL player, you come back, 
you talk to the team for a second, but you're not involved in the locker room and daily uh, stuff with the guys. So you really don't know exactly what's going on. Um, so, yeah, it's it's definitely tough because, like I said, we, we had a really good locker room. And I look back at my experience at Northwestern, and it was – I have nothing but fond memories with, with the guys hanging out, whether it was at a party, whether it was kicking it, um, playing video games, eating joy Um, Yeah, I, I have nothing but fond memories from my time in Northwestern. I mean, you got friends all around football. But how prevalent do you think hazing is today across college football, across the NFL? I think every team has some sort of hazing, like shaving heads, carrying pads. That, that's technically considered hazing. Um, so, you know, when I was a rookie, uh, for the bears, uh, D line dinner, where we go to a nice steakhouse, go to a club afterwards, the bills on me, right. That's a form of hazing. So I think it goes on everywhere. Um, the extent that they reported, um, is, is definitely, uh, disheartening, uh, everything they've been reporting. But, um, yeah, I think there's some form of hazing in every program. Do you remember how big that bill was? It wasn't bad. They took care of me because luckily most of the guys, uh, you know, were married at the time. and They weren't really uh, big to go out. So I think it was somewhere around like $3,500. I think I got off pretty easy for a fourth round pick. Do you look at that as, as team bonding or something that's just, you know what, it was cool back in the day, but as we move forward, it really, if anything, it actually hurts a football team more than it could ever help. As far as like the the just, like just, shaving the head, you know, all yeah, those practices. Yeah, I, I mean, I've I've heard just different people talk about it. Teams that are focused on hazing are are more likely to be losing than winning games. I, I feel like sometimes it distracts you from certain things, um, and it's just a different era, you know, like shaving somebody's head, carrying pads, and stuff like that. You know, used to just be a rite of passage, right, for all the younger guys, and now I think. Um, it, it's going to be a point where, where none of that happens anymore. And, um, you know, I think the, the end focus should be on football, right? Obviously, um, little stuff like that's been going on since the beginning of time. But I think when it comes down to it, it's got to focus on football, bonding together, and, um, you know, growing as a team. I got one Bears question for you, but do you have, uh, as you continue to talk to former teammates and just thinking about it, and I, I know you've got a couple names, and one in particular in mind, for who potentially Northwestern could hire that would look, you know, awful good coaching the Wildcats and getting them through this time. You know, I would love Mike Kafka. Uh, he's a Chicago kid, but I just don't know if, if him being a part of the Fitzgerald era would deter that, right? Um, but him being a rising star in the NFL – um, an offensive guru, what he's been able to do in Kansas City and now for the New York Giants. Um, you know, if I'm Northwestern and they feel comfortable about hiring a guy like him, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind uh, throwing him a bag uh, if they feel comfortable. But it, it might be just the error of Fitzgerald. They might be trying to uh, get away from that. And if you had to guess, Woot, Fitz never coaches again, coaches in college or coaches in the NFL, what would you say? I would say he's definitely going to coach again. Um, I, I just don't know where. I, I think, you know, in due time when they when they really dive deeply into this and figure out all the facts about everything surrounding it, um, I think the truth will come out. And, um, yeah, I think I think he'll eventually coach one day um, when, when, when this all gets settled. All right. One Bears question, Woot. Big year for Justin Fields. How optimistic are you about the 2023 Bears? I'm very optimistic, especially at the offensive side of the ball. I really love what they did uh, getting DJ Moore. It really takes the pressure off Chase Claypool and Darnell Mooney. They got Roshan Johnson. He really goes well with Khalil Herbert. Um, you know, Cole Komet, another year in this system. I expect him to really make his mark in the red zone. Robert Tanyan as well. The only thing I'm really concerned about, and you know this, Carm, is the pass rush. Right, I'm the defensive end position. You know, I feel like they they are going to be able to stop the run better, but in this Tampa too, it really relies on the pass rush from the front four. So um, I'm kind of worried about that, and I'm wondering if they're just going to dial up the blitz this year, wait till next year, and really stack up on the defensive end position. You got anything left in the tank? They could, you know, they're looking for somebody to come in or make an impact. Hey, I can, I can play I can play the run, and I'll give you some rushes inside. I don't know if I have the burst off the edge anymore. Uh, I'm old now, Carm. <laughs> Corey, really appreciate you joining in. I appreciate uh, seeing you as always. 
Thank you, my man.